Because I look at what I'm just saying, and I look at this scripture. And it said that he was resurrected, and he was seen of the apostles, and then above 500 at one time. This is why they had a lot of problem there with the Jews, because they wanted to annihilate and, and, and annul the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And see, you know, Paul, what was it? One of the kings there said, you almost persuade me. There is a part of persuasion, but let me tell you, there's got to be more than even persuading. There's got to be conviction. There's got to be some reality. And these people had seen, and these people were preaching everywhere. Let me tell you, if you were standing out there on the hillside and you seen the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, just naturally speaking, now you're living in that time. Maybe you was a believer, maybe you wasn't. Maybe you was just a spectator. Maybe you just come to see what was going on. You had heard a lot about this man called Jesus and this kind of, unfortunate now all of a sudden that his ministry ended up like it did ministry kind of short lived three three and a half years somewhere around there for such a young man of the age of 30 up till he was 33 a lot of people probably just kind of looked in the distance some maybe went out there to kind of see what was going on some maybe heard then all of a sudden, I mean, these are coming back saying, you know what? I've seen him. He's resurrected. I've seen him. I've seen him with my, my eyes. You know, ain't that the way we are? We want to see it with these eyes. They've seen it. First came to the 12. Then above 500, seen him at one time. What if maybe you was one of the believers? Maybe you had been there and you seen the crucifixion. All of a sudden, you was at that meeting, and the Lord showed up. And Paul then says, as one born out of season, he said, then last, I seen him. <coughs> he said, last of all, he was seen of me. Look at what a difference this made in the life of Paul. We've talked about it before. Look at the difference it made in the life of the disciples. See, it goes beyond a life of just routine and rituals and ritualistics, traditions. It goes beyond that. It becomes a reality. It becomes a burning reality. And even at that, you know, I find myself saying, God, you know, is it really the reality that you want it to be? God, help it to become more of a reality. Let this thing burn in my soul. Because you know what? I believe that is what leads us to evangelism. That's what leads us to caring for lost souls. When we get that place, we really believe and that thing just burns in our heart. All of a sudden, we can look at people and we don't resent, we don't find fault, we don't sit there and pick up. All of a sudden, we're looking at people and we begin to feel sorry for them. I mean, if I've got what it takes to save the world, Oh, we just have the thing with the swine flu. Say there's an epidemic that has come across. That's it. And I've got the cure. I've got the cure. But the government says, no, you can't do it. You can't give that because we haven't approved it. People refuse. Well, you're not a doctor. You don't have the papers on the wall. For any numbers of different reasons, they may refuse, reject. And you know you've got the cure. And you started to see people dying. 
You've seen little babies dying in their mother's arms. You've seen elderly people. You've seen middle-aged people. And they begin to die from this disease. And you can't do nothing about it because they've locked you up. They've put you in a place. You can't get to them. All of a sudden, if there's any humanity or godliness there at all, your heart would begin to break. It would begin to bleed. You would feel so sorrowful. But God, why can't I? And you know that's the way it is. The world has, there's an epidemic. It's called sin. And there is a cure. But I can't push this pill down your throat. You have got to take it for yourself. It is the cure. See, when that there becomes a reality, Paul experienced Jesus Christ. Paul was over here persecuting them for preaching the resurrection. But when Paul came face to face with that resurrection, See, we need to get to the place that we can present Jesus to them. Brother George, you say, sometimes we try to clean the fish before we catch them. We don't even get them in the boat. We've got the fillet knife out. But see, we can take, we can show. These things are for instruction. Then we can indoctrinate. But how are we going to allure? How are we going to bring people in to the body of Christ? Granted, it's going to be only a few. It's only going to be a few. There's not a lot of people that look at this way. Not when they got all these other options out here. <coughs> you think the responsibility. Think of the responsibility of these other churches that are not preaching the word of God. No wonder it said, Brother George used to bring it out so many times. They would be in hell with the, their people gnashing on them with their teeth. Why? What's going to happen? See, we try to win someone to Christ. We try to bring them into a, a true relationship with Jesus. But because maybe of our walk and our way, it's a little more tight. It's a little more stricter. Then these others have these other options. Well, why do I need to go to this church when I need to conform to certain things? Well, I can go to this other church and it doesn't matter. We're all going to the same place, ain't we? Is that what the lady told Brother George? The woman standing there looking like Jezebel? We're all going to the same place anyhow. What difference does it make? He had a little different thought about that. See, where are they going to stand? Where are they going to stand with God when they stand there at the day of judgment? And all these people have been turned to hell because they didn't follow Christ because what? They had too many options. And the sad part is, it's the people supposedly on our team and on our side that's handing out the options. You know, you're trying to win somebody over. You're trying to get them to go a certain way. And your brother, your sister standing over there, so well, you know, or you can do it this way. See, this is not a business as to, well, you know, you can do it that way or this way or this way, or you know, you can hold your brush this way, or you can hold it that way, or or if you don't like, you can start at the other end instead of this end. It don't work like that when it comes to serving God. It's got to be the way He said it. It's got, to be, it's got to be the absolute. It's got to be the way he said it. And that's why it's imperative that we understand what it is that he's saying. Not so much interpret, but understand. Got to understand. Paul said, last, I. He said, but it wasn't in vain. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Man, I was talking about time. I thought it was a good illustration as to an investment. 
He said he don't mind investing his time, but he expects a return. You know what? God has invested a lot of time in a lot of us. A lot of you sitting here, God has bestowed a lot of grace and a lot of time, many years of indoctrination. You know what? He expects a return. He expects a return. 